I've been trying out a few different formation experiments recently and this one has been a very popular suggestion. No one through the middle, everyone out wide, and this is as much width as you can have in this game. We've got Blim playing as a left back, Shaw as a wing back, Young at left mid, Rashford out wide, Martial as a left striker, Ibra currently playing as a right striker, Mkhitaryan on the right wing, Lingard at right mid, Valencia as a wing back and Darmian as our right back. This, as I say, is the most width that you can possibly have. You have to have a right striker and a left striker. Unfortunately, no more players can play absolutely out wide. But we've got no centre mids, no centre backs. No one providing any sort of support whatsoever for the middle. It'll be an interesting tactic. In real life, it wouldn't work. Will it work in FIFA 17 though? Very possibly. Anyway though, if you are new to the channel and want to see more FIFA 17 experiment videos, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you do go on to enjoy this video, leave it a like as well. Let's get into the experiment then, and let's see how this formation works out for us. As always with these formation experiments though, as we're changing up the team so much, we need to sign some new players. And one player that I want to go after is Lionel Messi. He is arguably the very best player in the world, 93 rated in FIFA, right winger, would fit the team perfectly. Let's try and sign him up. And I'm going to recall Yanazai from Sunderland as well. 76 rated, we need all the help we can get out wide so he's not the best player in real life but in the game he will do a job. And I'll also bring Pereira back. And as we're playing with no players whatsoever through the middle, don't really need centre backs so Barcelona have come in with a bid of 16.5 million for Smalling. Not accepting that. If they can give us 22.5 million though, he's gone. At least he is gone if he agrees to join them. English players have a tendency to say no to moving abroad, which is realistic to be fair. And Spurs want Fellaini for some reason. 8 million and he's yours. Barcelona came back with an offer of 18.5 million for Smalling, which I decided to accept. And Fellaini is on his way to Spurs. And now Chelsea want Marcus Rojo. He can play as a left back as well as a centre back so he would be useful in this squad but if they can offer me 35.5 million, he's gone. And I wasn't entirely expecting that to be honest. Chelsea have said yes to our counter offer for Marcus Rojo, 35.5 million. Pretty solid business there to be honest and Herrera is getting sold to Bayern for 32.5 million. And after countless negotiations, Messi is joining Manchester United. A million pounds a week, 125 million to sign him. Pretty expensive, but I wanted to bring him in, and now we're doing so. Messi is officially now a Manchester United player. In this FIFA 17 career mode save, obviously. And now Phil Jones looks like he's on his way to West Ham. So, we've already signed Messi. Let's try and bring in Ronaldo as well. 60 million plus Mata. Let's see what they say. Although, Juan Mata could be on his way to Atletico Madrid instead. They made an offer for him. I counted with 44 million. Wasn't really expecting them to accept it. But they have done. So, yeah, if that goes ahead, fantastic bit of business. And we should be able to bring in Ronaldo. Not before the community shield though. We're taking on Leicester. Messi's in the squad. Let's get into it and let's see if we can win this one with everyone out wide. Won't really make much sense if we do win this one. But we do pick up a 3-0 victory, so there you go. And now Wayne Rooney looks like he's on his way to Schalke. And we've done it, lads. We've completed the duo of dreams. Messi's going to be playing on the right. Ronaldo on the left. 125 million to sign him. Half a million a week. Bit excessive for a 31-year-old, but there you go. I wanted to bring him back to Manchester United. And that's exactly what we're doing. He's teaming up with Messi. And we should be absolutely unstoppable. Even with no players down the middle... We should win this title, which won't really make too much sense, but yeah, in career mode, anything is possible. Such as losing 2-0 to Bournemouth when you got Ronaldo and Messi in the side. Oh dear. And Wayne Rooney's just moved on to Schalke, so we've got a bit of money in the bank. Let's try and sign up Alex Sandro. Damian's just picked up an injury, so that's why we need another fullback. Fosu Mentz has been brought in for this one. We're taking on Southampton. Can we pick up a win this time? We lost to Bournemouth, but we beat Leicester in a community shield. And I reckon we're going to get back to winning ways here. We pick up a 2-0 victory. Seriously, Yanazai, you've already had the number 11 shirt. Now you thought you could steal the iconic number 7 as well. Not happening. And it doesn't leave us with much money, but Alexandro will be our final signing of the summer window. And we've just about scraped a victory against Hull there. 
It's been pretty tough going so far, but Messi's bagged himself two goals, and we've won the game 3-2. And just like Ronaldo when he had the number 21, Messi just didn't look quite right with that number 15 shirt. Ozil signed for Barcelona as always. That is the most scripted transfer of this game, I reckon. Whilst Ronaldo and Messi have both joined Manchester United. Hang on a minute, Manchester City only got 47 million for Aguero. Luis Suarez alongside Sergio Aguero. That is going to be some strike force. Well, that's not exactly the best news in the world when you're trying to win the league, is it? David De Gea's broken his ankle and he's out for the next seven weeks. Great. At least we've beaten Manchester City. It's another two goals for Messi. And now we've beaten Fenerbahce 4-1. Not a bad start to our Europa League campaign. And I'm not too sure how Watford are doing this well so far, but they're third in the table at the moment. We're fourth. As always, everyone's playing out wide. Let's get into this game against Watford and let's see if we can pick up a massive victory. They've been brilliant so far, so it wouldn't be too surprising if they beat us. And they do. They win the game 2-1. And now we've lost to Norwich on penalties. De Gea's out injured and it's all falling apart. Watford, Swansea and Middlesbrough are all above us in the table. And what on earth has happened to Manchester City? Why have they only got four points from five games? What is going on here? I'm so confused. Anyway though, let's get into the game and let's see if we can pick up a win against Leicester. Hopefully we can make the magic happen. We've not been playing well recently, but this is the game where we turn it all around and win the game 3-1. And both Ronaldo and Messi scored in that one. It's a 2-1 victory over Feyenoord. That is such a weird looking top four. Yet Arsenal still sit in fourth position. Anyway though, let's get into this game against Stoke. And let's pick up another victory. I reckon we can win this one about 4 0 maybe. Two goals for Ronaldo, two for Messi, or a 2-1 result. I'll settle for that. And now it's time to head to Anfield. De Gea is back from injury, so he's back in the team. Let's see if we can pick up another positive result. We're second in the table at the moment. Watford are top. Didn't really see that one coming, but there you go. Let's hope that we can pick up a win here against Liverpool. 2-1. I was really starting to rate this formation, but now we've lost 1-0 to Shakhtar at Old Trafford. Not the best result in the world. That's more like it, lads. And that's not a bad result either. Or that one. And that's a pretty solid result too. The fact that we're doing so well with this formation doesn't make much sense. Zlatan struggling out wide though. That does make sense. He's got no goals in 17 appearances. He's a bit on the slow side. He's getting even slower and it's not working out for him. I might consider dropping him to be honest. Mkhitaryan is going to play as a right striker now. Zlatan's not even on the bench. We're taking on Arsenal. Can we pick up a victory here? They've moved up to third place. I'm pretty sure we're top of the league. So yeah, so far so good. And we draw that game 1-1. At least we've beaten Fenerbahce and West Ham. It's a 3-0 victory this time. We can't beat Everton though, unfortunately. Although a 1-1 draw is a pretty solid result. And we've already qualified for the next round of the Europa League. But as long as we don't lose this one, we're heading through as group winners. So come on, lads. We can do this. I believe in you. And we do pick up a 1-0 victory. Can't beat Crystal Palace though, unfortunately. Messi missed a penalty in the second minute. And we went on to lose the game 1-0 embarrassing and now we've drawn with West Brom and we're turning into the real life Manchester United it's another draw at least we're still good enough to beat Sunderland I suppose the worrying thing though is that De Gea has picked up another injury and after breaking his ankle earlier in the season he's now out for four months with anterior cruciate ligament damage or at least I think that's what the message is meant to say anyway. What it does say is that David De Gea has suffered a anterior cruciate ligament so it makes it sound like an anterior cruciate ligament has just suddenly appeared on him and it's keeping him out for four months. Needs to be reworded. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Either way, he's out for four months and that is very disappointing. And now we've reached the midway point of the season with a 4-2 victory over Middlesbrough. We're four points clear of Leicester, six clear of Arsenal and Watford are currently fourth. Bournemouth, Burnley and Southampton are down in the relegation zone and Manchester City is still struggling massively. I'm not too sure why the game hates them so much, but there you go. They've only picked up 20 points from 19 matches. And now we've drawn 2-2 with West Ham. And I quite like that the FA Cup has drawn us up against Oxford United. Hopefully we won't smash them too badly. We've got everyone out wide as always. They're playing a pretty regular 4-4-2 boring anyway though let's get into the game let's see if we can beat them come on Manchester United in fact I've got split loyalties at this point I'm not entirely sure what way I want it to go and we pick up a 3-0 victory not too embarrassing for Oxford I'll take that result 
it's pretty decent for us, and it's not awful for them. And Paul Pogba's not played at all this season, he's very unhappy. Sorry mate, but we're not playing anyone for the middle, you're never going to get game time. Let's try and sell you to Real Madrid. We're even making a slight profit. 90 million, I think we signed him for about 89 million, so not a massive amount of profit, but hey, Profit's profit. The celebration stopped there though, we've drawn 1-1 with Liverpool. And now that Paul Pogba's been sold to Real Madrid, we can see about going after a couple of extra players. Starting out with Bernardo Silva. He's been linked with Manchester United in reality. 84 rated at 22, very good winger. Let's see about adding him to the squad. I'll make an opening bid of 45 million and hopefully that will be accepted. First of all, we've got to play Stoke though. And we've just about rescued a point there. Messi must have given us the lead. Then Glenn Johnson bagged himself two goals before Ronaldo picked up an equaliser in the 89th minute. Very close, nearly lost. Thankfully though, we've got a point. And Bernardo Silva's accepted a contract offer now. 90 grand a week. We've had to pay 52 million to pick him up. Pretty expensive, but he is young. He's high quality and we're bringing him into the club. Just in time to take on QPR in the FA Cup. He's making his debut in this one on the right wing. Let's get into it and let's see if we can pick up a victory. Come on, lads, you can do this. Can we win both the Premier League and the FA Cup? That would be absolutely brilliant. We've been knocked out of the League Cup, but not to worry. If we can win the FA Cup, that would be beautiful. And we've won that game 1-0. And now we've beaten Hull City 2-0. McTominay is making quite a few appearances. He's only 59 rated, but he's made 16 appearances so far for a team that are top of the table. Fair play. And we've still got a bit of money to spare, so let's try and bring in Serge Aurier. Super Serge is now signing for Manchester United. And check out how much money Real Madrid have been spending. They've signed Pogba and Lukaku, whilst we brought in Bernardo Silva. Time to take on Leicester City now then. They're doing a pretty solid job. They're third in the table, and they've got two games in hand over us, so... Yeah, pretty important match. We need to pick up a win in this one, really. Come on, lads. I believe in you. You can get the job done. And it's a 3-0 victory. Two goals for Messi. Silva scored as well. He's injured now, though. So, yeah, that's not looking good. Rashford got sent off. But who really cares? We might have been down to 10 men. But we still won the game 3-0. And Bernardo Silva's only out for a couple of days. So nothing to worry about. And we've now beaten Watford 2-0. They're chasing Champions League football, so that's a good result, to be honest. And now we've beaten Krasnodar. We've got an away goal, and we're looking good to get through to the next round. And we've just about squeezed our way past Rotherham in the FA Cup. We beat them in the first leg. We've beaten them again in the second, with 10 men for most of the match. Krasnodar and no match for Manchester United. And Southampton can't handle us either. And we really need to get revenge in this one. We lost to Bournemouth in the first league game of the season. Now though, we're going to smash them. We're going to put about six past them. And we're going to pick up a massive victory. Or perhaps we'll lose again. I really hope not though. Bournemouth, don't be our bogey team. It's okay, we've beaten them 3-1. And Yanazai scored. I think that's his first goal of the season. Yep, one goal in 15 appearances. At least it's better than Ibra's record. And sadly, we picked up a 0-0 draw in that one. And now we've lost 1-0 to Man City. They're still struggling in the league. I don't know why, but there you go. FIFA 17 career mode is pretty odd. At least they're doing all right for themselves in the cup, though. We might be out of the domestic cups, but we're still looking good for the league title. And it might not be the only thing that we win, either. We've knocked Schalke out of the Europa League. Sorry, Rooney. I really wish that we'd stop losing to Man City, though. They are ninth in the table now, to be fair, but we're top. We're the best team in England. Yet we struggle against West Brom. At least it's a win though. Two goals for Ronaldo, 2-1 victory. I'll take it. Can't beat Everton though, unfortunately. On the plus side though, we've once again beaten Sunderland. And now we've put ourselves into a fantastic position to knock St Etienne out of the Europa League. Just like we did in reality. Big game against Chelsea now, boys. This could be the decider. If we win this one, I can't see them catching us. If they beat us though, there's everything to play for still in the last few games of the season. Come on, lads, don't mess this up. We've picked up a 2-1 victory. We are going to be Premier League champions. And we might even do the double. And De Gea is back in the team for this game against Burnley. He's missed most of the season, but he's back for this one. And we pick up a 3-2 victory over Burnley. We seem to be picking up so many red cards, but never mind. It's not really affecting us. We've won the game 1-0, and we scored in the 90th minute. 
It looked like we were going to get a draw, but Cristiano Ronaldo popped up late on, and he's rescued us the win. And that's not the worst result in the world, to be honest. We've still got to play Benfica at Old Trafford, and we've got an away goal. See you later, Arsenal. This one's a big game, though. We're up against Benfica in the Europa League. Bernardo Silva is sadly missing. He's suspended. I reckon we can still win this one, though. Come on, boys. We drew the first game 1-1, and we are going to smash them in this second leg. Well, I say we're going to smash them. I'd take a 1-0 victory, to be honest. And we pick up a 2-2 draw. We've been knocked out at the semi-final stage. It went to extra time. Unfortunately, though, they got an away goal in extra time. And that's been enough to see them through. We've been knocked out, and I am gutted. So, we've been knocked out of every single cup competition with this formation, but it doesn't really matter too much. The aim was to win the Premier League title, and we've already secured that. Two games left to play, and we are nine points clear of Chelsea. So, we've won the Premier League once again. These formation experiments are working out pretty well. Messi's missed a penalty. Doesn't matter though, we win that game 2-0. No players whatsoever through the middle, yet going into the final game of the season, we are 12 points clear at the top of the table. Bit broken, but there you go. That is FIFA 17 career mode for you. Let's see if we can pick up one final victory against Crystal Palace. 1-0. Messi scores, and that is a fantastic way to finish the season. So, we've won the title by 12 points. Chelsea came second, Arsenal third, Leicester fourth, Liverpool fifth, and Manchester City can be found all the way down the table in 11th position. They got a goal difference of zero. I don't know why they do so badly in simulated matches, but there you go. Once again, they've not been able to do particularly well. Came 11th, and that's got to be pretty disappointing for them. Anyway, though, in terms of the relegated teams, it was Bournemouth, Burnley and West Ham. Manchester United, meanwhile, have won the Premier League title with nobody through the middle whatsoever. Go figure. Eden Hazard was the top scorer, followed by Messi and Ronaldo. Messi topped the assist chart too, followed by Ronaldo once again. And Lloris and Karius both kept 13 clean sheets. Manchester City won the FA Cup, so again, I don't know why they did so poorly in the Premier League, but there you go. They at least won the FA Cup. Crystal Palace got to the final for a second season running, and unfortunately for them, they lost again. Spurs won the League Cup. Real Madrid won the Champions League. They knocked out both Man City and Spurs on their way to the final, where they then beat Bayern. Whilst over in the Europa League, Benfica knocked us out, then went on to win the whole thing. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. At least we were beaten by the best, with Messi scoring the most goals and Ronaldo providing the most assists. Along with Rooney, to be fair, he did pretty well for himself out in Germany. Right then, so I saved the game before that final Premier League match. Time to get into a bit of gameplay now. Taking on Crystal Palace in the final Premier League game of the season. No players through the middle whatsoever, so the chances are that Crystal Palace will just rush through the middle and we'll end up losing about 6-0. Let's get into the game though, and let's see if it works out that way. Mkhitaryan's on it now then, plays that forward to Ronaldo, turns that inside, takes on his man. Can we get an early goal here? Ronaldo's going to play that through to Messi to make it 1-0. He hits it straight to keeper, gets another chance though, and we've taken the lead already. Fantastic breakaway there, should have scored with the first chance, got a second go at it though, and he didn't make the same mistake again. Finds the back of the net, and it's 1-0 to Manchester United. Here we go, we've got another chance. We've played that through to Ronaldo, takes on his man. Going to move that to Messi once again. Can we get a second goal here? Messi plays that back. It drops for Mkhitaryan. I'm not entirely sure what to do with it. we played it out wide to Antonio Valencia. He's going to move it back to Mkhitaryan, who moves it on to Rashford. Nice little passing game going on at the moment. What on earth was that, though? I'll be honest, considering that everyone's meant to be out wide, we've got a lot of players through the middle. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but there you go. We're on the attack once again. Martial's working his way forward. Going to move that on to Messi. He plays it on to Lingard. He's going to try and find someone in the box. I should have just taken a shot with Lingard, but to be honest, I don't really trust his attacking ability. Palace have won a corner now then. That is such a poor delivery, though. Lingard loses it. We're going to move it back to him, though. Come on, Lingard. Make the most of this situation. Moves it on to Messi. He's going to turn his man. Play it over to Rashford. Come on, lads. That is a horrible challenge. That has to be a red card. Tackle from behind, and he's not even been booked. Oh dear, our defence has just been completely shrugged off by Benteke. He's working his way forwards, and what a save by De Gea. I really don't understand this formation, to be honest. At times, we've got everyone through the middle. At other times, we've got no one through the middle. Obviously, you'd expect us to have no one through the middle, but it is so inconsistent. Here comes De Gea now then. Thinks he's an outfield player. 
working his way forward. Look at him go. He's nearly made it to the halfway line, then lost the ball. Uh-oh. Don't let him score, lads. They've moved it forward. De Gea's still not back. Well done. Good recovery. Messi's going to try and slot this one into the top corner. Can we make it work? Oh, what a finish. It's 2-0. And that is a beautiful free kick from Messi. I've not scored a free kick for a while, but that one was absolutely brilliant. Absolute peach of a free kick. Messi's delighted. Ronaldo picks him up. And let's take another look at this one. What a finish from Messi. Ashley Young's on it now then. Plays that forward to Martial. He turns that inside. Going to move that through to Ronaldo. Good bit of play from us. We've moved it on to Mkhitaryan. Straight at the keeper. Should have been 3-0, but never mind. We've got another chance here. Rashford's going to play that over. And, oh, how is that not a goal? Damian's on the ball now then. Chips that one through to Mkhitaryan. Can we get another goal here? Mkhitaryan's going to chip that once again. Finds its way to Ronaldo. Got to finish that one. Doesn't bury it. And Messi's missed a header there. Right then, Ronaldo's going to play this one short to Messi. What can he do here? He's going to pass that back to Ronaldo. Takes on his man. Takes on a few more. It's dropped for someone else in the box. And we've scored. Mkhitaryan's found the back of the net. Runs into the keeper. Not entirely sure what he was doing to Mandanda there. But there you go. We've scored once again. Made it 3-0. And that is game over now. Ronaldo was unlucky. It dropped straight into Mkhitaryan's path though. And then he just slots it home. Brilliant finish. Mandandra had no chance. 3-0. And that's the final whistle. I'm really not sure what to make of that formation, to be honest. At times, everyone played out wide. At other times, though, they all just seemed to hover around the middle. Bit odd, but there you go. We picked up a 3-0 victory, and I'll now leave you to enjoy the Premier League celebrations. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.